Okay, Holiday Monday in the Kingdom, and we're still working on those hot rod motors. Yes, but this morning when I got up, it was plus 10, but feels like plus 9. Yeah, and it was foggy, like London fog. That's London, England over there, the homeland, eh? Okay, so that feels like plus 50 on the yo-yo scale, but feels, yeah, no, it's plus 50 on the yo-yo scale, but feels like plus 48. All right, so we all know the 48 sedan delivery, which is over there somewhere. Yes, I'll have to go rescue Johnny in the 48 sedan delivery if he breaks down. At 7.52, he bounced past the kingdom, so he's right on time. He's able to wake up in the morning, you know, cuddle the wife, go get the truck started with no computer issues, hook up to the trailer, and head up to Kenneseo. So he's always within 10 minutes driving by the kingdom. Isn't that unreal? Always on time, Johnny. That's why he delivers the freight. All right. So today it looks like it's going to be a sunny day, but it'll probably end up raining. Yes. And we want to get working on that motor. Yes. That's uh, 350 small block Chevy from my wasted youth. Built in 1984. Back when I had hair on the top of my head. Yes. So this will be a quick intro because we're going to work hard on that motor. Yes. Standing here holding the stick is wasting time. We got to get that motor together because the weekends will be over and in reality we'll set in and we're back to work. Yes, and the boss is such an asshole. All right, I better go. Here he comes. Okay, holiday Monday in the whole shack and it's going to rain. The staff doesn't know what she's doing today because it's going to rain. All right, so I was able to get the seal out. Okay. And we assembled it back in 1984, flat to flat. Now they're saying have an offset and then put some little gasket goo on there. This is the bearing here. I don't know if we can feel it or see it. Yes, Les Nessman. Okay, over here is the old seal. And that's how I got it out. I pushed it out with the flat end. And then as it came around, I was able to get the side of the screwdriver into it or whatever. On the side here to pull it up, okay. And here's the original bearing here you know it is a little rough you know but that's what we're going to do put it back together hope for the best and then we'll have to look for a new motor but we'll keep this motor around because of the historical value and the memories of working side by side with my dad and putting this thing together and he says we'll build it loose because you're just going to blow it up well 38 years later i'm doing it again Okay, the rear main seal was an easy project, and then we decided we'd pop out. Oh, the timing chain is not that bad. Okay, I forget what we paid for it back then, but it's uh, one of those roller chains or whatever. Okay, so you can tell this motor is over 38 years old. I figured the frost plugs or expansion plugs would be rusted out, but I was so wrong. These put up a good fight. One, most likely I always ran the antifreeze in it. Two, that was good quality steel back then and they were starting to rust out or whatever. And then we also changed out the plugs, the drain plugs there. And then you use your uh, pipe tap to chase the hole and then you got a uh, pipe dope it up or whatever. Okay, so it seals. So this turned out good. And just like my father instilled in my little mind back then, you always have your wording correct. Okay, so make sure you do it properly or don't do it all. Yeah, and here we are just refreshing this motor, not a rebuild, just regasket it and go. All right, so the drama was on. Okay, here's the block heaters. Okay, for those guys in Australia, this is a block heater. It's an element that heats up. This is the original one that was put in 1984. Okay, and it's basically one company in Canada that makes it uh, Philips Thermoco or Thermoco Philips or whatever. They're going under the name Zero Start now. So I have this old one. We have a new one. Okay, the new one is in here. All right, the cylinder wall is right there. So it's the different locations which heat up the block the best. So I never put, never seize on this bolt. I don't know if we can see it because the threads on anything new nowadays, I'm putting never seize on the threads, no matter where they go, it's as actually as a lubricant, okay? So this bolt's uh, stripped out. I didn't even get this flat, okay? Because this comes bent up, okay? So you flatten it out like like this here okay like that that's the old style that works good okay 
So this thing stripped out. So the panic was on and the 86 Dodge head hanger had the slant six or the lazy six that fell over. It's the same diameter. So I grabbed it, tried it in the hole, but this is too far out. So it hit the cylinder wall. So this is what I needed. So I had to take the new one I bought that stripped out, get this one apart and get the threads in and get it going. So we actually saved a day. We're also putting this gasket goo or silicone on everything because the quality of everything today who says it's going to leak or who says it's not going to leak so it's best to put the lubricant or the silicone on or the gasket goo on everything okay that way you know it's not going to leak because look at where these frost plugs are okay that's behind the motor mount this here is beside the oil filter and this is your clutch and exhaust and all that kind of stuff is hanging right there okay so the odds of actually finding that and getting that uh, fixed is pretty slim Okay, one of the Kingdom followers on YouTube posted out that I have the wrong harmonic balancer. Good eyesight. Uh, must not drink as much as I. Okay, so that's the one that I got off uh, this motor, supposedly spec or whatever. But on Rock Auto, they don't give you the measurements of this stuff. They just show you the picture and you can zoom in. So, good eye. Because this is the original one from the 350 built in 1984. Okay, so this is what we want because... I couldn't figure out why the fan, the water pump pulley that I bought wasn't lining up, okay? This isn't the correct one. I just tossed this one on to, uh, how do you say, turn the motor over. So we got to find this one, which is the small version. It's inch and a quarter by six and three quarters. Like that's the two and three eighths or something like that. Today. I found one measurement on the internet. All right, let's go have some lunch and we'll research this harmonic balancer to see what we can find or not find, okay? Okay, on the oil pan on the 37 Dodge hot rod when it was a welding truck, I bottomed out welding on a, on a job site or whatever, so I scratched it on a rock here, so I'm going to put some welds on it. I welded it here because it was leaking and I caught it in time, and that was just done when it was on the truck, so now I just want to take the Asian welder and booger, put some booger welds over and smooth it out to make it look pretty. Okay, for the quick weld, I didn't put the external fan on the Asian welder to keep it cool. I did a quick weld over top. All right, so I got it full of water or some water in there. You can see the reflection and it's dry. Isn't that good? Excellent. Let's get this uh, oil pan back on and then we can go zoom zoom tonight. Okay, getting ready to install the oil, install the oil pan. I remember taking the brand new oil pump to school for welding class in high school and i mig welded it right there that's why the little burps or air holes okay because mig welding back in 19 mid 80s was just coming in stream or whatever okay so it's a good thing that one over there is leaking and i gotta pull the oil pan off because when i put the pickup on that one on the new oil pump i hummed and hawed for a bit wasn't i supposed to do something and i was correct i should have welded that okay so now when I pull the oil pan off of that one over there, I will correct the situation. So everything happens for a reason. I put the wrong seal in. So now I'm correcting the oil pump thing before it falls off. All right, let's get this oil pan off or on and get going. Okay, over in the shop here and we had five of the head bolts or the header bolts. Uh, we had the plasma cut off. They would not come out. So on the one head, thread on a, a nut. And then use the MIG welder and just pile it on there. Yes. And one thing nice about these uh, gasless MIG welders, I find the tack welding, anything you do is far stronger than a gas welder. Okay. So I was quite surprised when I tack something on, it's still stuck there. So I got two, three of these out, no problem on the other head. Then this head here, okay, all it did was shear off the bolt inside the nut. So then we did the washer trick washer washer build it up smaller not just go 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 it wouldn't budge so we ended up drilling it out quarter inch and then five sixteenths which is the topping hole and then you have to be very careful to chase out the threads because the threads are in here binding as you're sending the starter top down and then finishing out with the bottoming top i think that's the proper canadian terms or whatever okay you use thingy one and then finish with thingy three okay all right, so this head turned out pretty good. We got buffed up and we saved it. So that's the main thing. So it was my lucky day today and I want to keep going because I don't want to stop because my luck could run out. 
Okay, the rains came when I was pressure washing the final things here. We washed the heads and everything like that, and now we got them on. Okay, I also tightened them three times or whatever. You set your temp, uh, it calls for 65 on the uh, torque specs for the cylinder heads, okay? So I went at 40, and then 50, and then I went up to the 65. But I also do it twice. We go around once, twice at that um, uh, pounds, and then go around again. And then the final 65, it's actually three times because you double check everything because you can't miss a bolt or anything. So, okay, my little system called Sesame Street. Okay, worked out very well. All right, dump the bag out here, grab the lifter, give it a blow, and then in it goes and squirt oil onto the lifter as you put it in to make sure it lubes, okay? So if you screw up, you can double check your bag here. What's your last hole you did and what's left on the shelf here, okay? So that's the way we do it in the great, uh, in the, how would you say, wilderness Alaska. But in northern Manitoba, we keep it simple, right? So we're just about got this thing buttoned up. We got the new motor mounts on, everything like that. But we can't crank it over for oil pressure because I had to put the old filter back on. Because the new one last filter I have in stock, I don't like it, okay? I looked at it. And I don't like it, so we're not going to put it on. I got an order in uh, to get some more. Okay, it's on the to-do list, but yeah, remember it takes a week to get everything to the end of the world. So let's get this last uh, uh, valve train done, and then we'll just do a torque or tighten them up a bit. We won't do the one turn or whatever because we not we have no oil pressure because some of these lifters are, how would you say, have no oil in them. So we got to build the oil pressure to get the lifters to be full. I couldn't soak them in or in a group or I didn't want to soak them individually or anything like that. But that's okay. As long as we get this motor buttoned up and then we can switch it out with this one here that's uh, voided the warranty. It's uh, still leaking on the shop floor. So we got to correct that. Okay, 5 o'clock in the kingdom. Finishing up the loose ends here. I made a mistake again for the first time in my life. I shouldn't be running the 185 thermostats because that's for the wilderness Alaska or the northern manitoba so i put the 180s back in but probably for filming if these trucks go to the states it'll probably have to be the 160s in them okay all right so now we're figuring out the little loose ends here so we can figure out what parts need to be ordered we know that's the short water pump and then this is the um water pump pulley and it's a single pulley okay so this came from ebay so I'm using my straight edge here. Oh, hand and eye coordination. I'm not walking to the shop. I've made enough trips back and forth. So it looks to be about the right one. Okay. And then I went to the shed there, to the parts trader. I found a, a harmonic balancer. Okay. So at lunchtime, I was checking these out. And that's the problem we come up with is these come up as generic. Everybody's using the same pictures, which is the wide one. Okay. This is six and three quarters by one and an eighth right in here, okay? All right, so I got my pulleys here, okay? We've ordered that one. Oh, my hand and eye coordination and my cord's getting caught. Oh my God, three days in a row I've been doing this. I'm getting tired. I need more alcohol. I've been staying actually sober. Okay, that one's been ordered on eBay and we have one of these in stock, okay? So now we go over here. We've got this all figured out. It went together actually good. Okay. All right. See if we got enough talent here. All right. Okay. My dad had a 32 by 32 Quonset or arch shaped building. It was made of wood. So he decided to build the shop at one end and it was a goofy door system. Okay. So here's the 37 Dodge chassis when it was being built. Uh, glare. Okay, let's see if we got enough talent. And over here, ooh, look at the talent. Okay, there's the motor right there as we're building the truck. And that was professionally painted at Mason's Auto Body in Ninet, Manitoba. So we had to flat tow it down, bring it back, paint it, go back and forth. So there's the motor there because once it was done at the college, it couldn't stay at the college because you're a guest at the college. You couldn't work on private pro projects. So we quickly did it and then it came to the shop here. So that's the same motor 38 years later. Okay. And then I did good with one picture. Let's try another one. So then in 1993, after the divorces and all that kind of crap, I ended up in Northern Manitoba. So there's the 37 Dodge as a welding truck. My Miller welder was in the back. I don't know if we can see it. 
Is that working? I'm trying to get the glare. So we had side curtains for the open hood and a winter front. And that's how I survived my divorce. I was able to weld and continue on with life. Okay. All right. Let's get these motors changed out because we could boss will be upset if he can't have, if he sees the mini hoe in the shop, which should be over here. So let's switch out the motors and get this project done. Okay, seven o'clock in the kingdom and we did it. Two 1984 based motors here. Okay, that's the one from 1984. I had to take it apart, fix it all up. And then this is the black motor, the 354 bolt main, okay? I went to the storage trader, found the uh, harmonic balancer and I marked the timing on the black one to this one, okay? Because I'd used the black one to make sure top dead center was top dead center so there's about a uh, an inch and a half difference on the uh, timing mark so we'll have to figure that out but i've read on the internet that's sometimes what screws people up okay so now we have two motors complete we listened to the music from the 80s and we enjoyed it it brought back memories of working on this motor with my dad and he taught me lots because i was able to remember also too when i had the oil pan off on this one I welded the oil pump something, the sucker thing on, just like the other one was. And I put the front seal in the proper way. It fits a lot better for some reason that way. All right. Okay, this uh, the mini hose shock is cleaned up and ready for the hoe to come in. So we put the, some of the tools back in the shop. We actually didn't take much. Anytime we needed more tools, we went to the storage trader and took from Dad's or Jerry Umbeck's set. That way, this set tools are totally separate. And the little stereo worked pretty good. We were rocking all weekend, three days of fun. I won't tell you how much beer we consumed, but we tried to stay sober to get this project done. All right, so I just have to push this motor back and then bring the mini hoe in, and we're ready to start work on Tuesday. Hopefully the boss isn't an asshole. Oh well. Monday afternoon here in Whoville came to take my garbage out and I noticed these flowers are vining all the way up my dog pen here. As you can see, they're almost six feet high. That is crazy. I don't know if I can get a better look for you, but these guys are wrapping themselves around this chain link fence and you can't even really pull them off. See, look, you can't pull this one off. But now I'm going to head back inside and finish sorting some berries. A little update on my garden outside the house. Those are some blueberries that have died and will come back next year even stronger. My raspberries seem to be doing okay. They haven't died since I moved them back outside. I haven't gotten to pick any of them, but I think it's because of the birds. My onions are also doing very well from the kingdom. And then my potatoes are also doing well, I'm hoping. They haven't sprouted out of the ground yet, but that's okay. Looks like it's going to rain again. The storms are rolling in. It's kind of getting chilly. It actually didn't get hot today. It's been kind of cool and it was really foggy this morning to the point where you couldn't even see over there. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to catch it, but there's a float plane coming in. Not sure if you'll be able to hear it in the background. I kind of have the mic on my cap right now, but you can kind of hear a float plane taking off or coming in to my far left. Actually, right here. Hang on. There we go. I think they're going to fly right over town and probably go land out at the water base, which is just directly that way. Let's see if I can get a better picture. Yeah, now they're banking. They're going to turn. All depends on how the wind is, is where they're going to land and what way they're going to come in to land on the lake. As you can see, my rhubarb's doing very well ever since I moved it out of the white bin. I think it was just taking up too much of the energy and it couldn't grow because it's never actually been this big since I've had it. And that's almost 10 years now, which is crazy. And if you can see closely, it looks like there's 16 and I think there's another one growing in right there. I also have some rhubarb right here too, the one that was given to me. But I ended up having to cut it off because it wasn't looking so good, but it's growing again. I planted my wild daisy I got yesterday in with my rhubarb just to see if it'll grow and root out and if it does take I will plant it into its own container like I do my purple flower and my blue roots that are actually growing really well. But now it's time to get back to sorting some more blueberries. Finally done sorting through all the blueberries. Didn't actually have to throw out that many. I did pretty good berry picking even though the sand flies were really bad that day. But now it's time to let them dry and I'll divide them up and give my dad some of the kingdom and then I'm going to freeze the rest.
wanted to mention if you guys had any blueberry recipes leave them down in the comments and i'll surely check them out and give a couple of them a try and post them here for you now i'm just going to clean out from sorting everything and let the dogs out before it rains here and then end my day okay just the icky weekend rain on and off on and off on and off that's why i chose to hide in the hose shack because every long august long weekend it seems to be the same thing all right Everything is looking good. Let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video, and relax. It'll be so good to get back to our regular work schedule because busting my tushy on the long weekend tuckered me out at my age. All right, we'll talk to you later.